crazy mother. Hey guys, what's up? So I was asked really recently um, by a guy, a really great guy, really um, motivated, ambitious, hardworking guy, I respect a lot, to um, create a video about something. I also really wanted to do it myself. And I thought I'd go ahead and take this opportunity to announce that with this YouTube channel, I'm not going to be nearly as active. I've recently gotten a job and I really want to dedicate a lot of my time and energy to that so I'm not going to completely you know shut down this channel or anything but I won't be posting quite as regularly uh, and it won't be you know quite as fancy or anything like that it'll be pretty some pretty simple recordings pretty short um, anyway with that off my chest uh, I'd like to get started uh, this particular guy I mentioned whose name is Chris has a group uh, kind of a company, I guess. They also have a Facebook, uh, a group on Facebook called Accountability Buddies. Highly recommended if you want to up your game, you want to work harder and get better setting your goals and things like that. I'll post a link in the description box. And um, someone recently up there put a really uplifting post, and I have to follow that act. And I don't know. Uh, no, I don't know if I'll say anything as uplifting or profound as she did, but I would like to add my two cents because I really, really believe in what they're doing here. So, in a recent video on this channel, uh, I talked about quitting and giving up. I think that's what I want to make this video about. Um, most of my life, I was a habitual quitter. And what I mean by this is I would get super gung-ho uh, about a project, about something I was going to learn in the future. I was unbelievably ambitious to the extent of like losing sleep, skipping meals, even forgetting to go to sleep, um, rolling out of bed and literally getting to work on something. And I would go at it hard like this for weeks, maybe even months, depending on what it was. And then I would hit that point. And I think everybody knows the point I'm talking about, where their ambitions got overwhelming, or they hit a snag, they hit a plateau, hit a slump, whatever. And those thoughts, those voices started to come. For me, this pretty much continued perpetually. Uh, it could have been sports, could have been a language, could have been an instrument, a bunch of other things, probably until I decided to learn Japanese. What happened with Japanese is I got started and I would hit a snag, I think it would be a couple months into it, and <clears throat> that voice would come in the head, I give up. Um, now of course would be followed just by this tirade, this avalanche of excuses and reasons and self-pity and that sort of thing. But something changed with Japanese, and I don't know what it was. Remember the first time I decided to quit Japanese. You know, maybe you've had this series of thoughts in your head. There's something you were going after. Uh, could have been a diet, could have been exercise, could have been a language like me, maybe a promotion at work, maybe a project you were working on, something you were trying to create, a book you were trying to write, whatever it was. And generally the thoughts start out small, and reasonable. They start out with, you don't have to do this right now. You could do it later today. You could even do it tomorrow. You could even start in a couple months, maybe next year. And these thoughts escalate up into, you could even quit. And that's a really tempting thought, particularly after you've been feeling bad You've been feeling frustrated. You've been feeling aggravated, down, upset with yourself, disappointed because of this endeavor that you've chosen to begin. It's a really appealing thought. Quitting would take care of all your problems. Disappointment would go away. There'd be nothing to be frustrated about because there'd be nothing to fail at, nothing to make mistakes at. There's no embarrassment because there's nothing to do that makes you look like a fool. It was a very 
attractive and alluring thought for me for a very long time. But with Japanese, like I said, I did quit for about two weeks. And then one day I woke up and there were three words that came to my head that forever changed the way I looked at quitting. And these three words were, not this time. It just popped in my head. You know, there was that flow of thoughts of like, this is so hard and makes you feel bad. It's a good thing you quit. You know, you should quit this sort of thing. But then it just came, this little voice just, no, not this time. And I picked myself up, got my notes together, got my study cards ready, and started studying again. And I'll be honest with you, it wasn't like, um, wasn't like a smooth ride from there on out. I quit and then would start again. But every single time, that voice would come back and would come back sooner and would come back more strongly. Not this time. Get back up, do this again. And it occurred to me how powerful this pattern of thought was. How simple it was. It is really simple. It's three words. But it's probably the most difficult thing to do. Just tell yourself, not this time. Oh, I don't have to diet today. I can start tomorrow. Not this time. This time, we're going to start today. Oh, I don't have to work on this project. I could just watch this TV show. Not this time. This time, this moment, I'm going to start the project. And it's a very simple thing to do, but it's not easy at all. No. It requires so many things to do to keep up. You know, we have to put aside that enormous vision of the future when it overwhelms us. We have to say, shut the hell up to those voices from the past, those naysayers out there telling us we can't do it, telling us it's not good enough, it's never going to happen laughing at us. We have to put that to the side. Or we have to say, go ahead and laugh. Go ahead and talk. But not this time. This time I'm going to do this thing. We have to take control of that which is within our grasp, which is this moment. We have to decide, this time I'm going to start reading that book. This time I'm going to start writing that novel. This time I'm going to write that page. This time, I'm going to say what I need to say. This time, I'm going to share how I feel with this person. Just this time. And after I got in the habit of doing this, something occurred to me. To be able to do this, as I said, requires a lot of things. Uh, it requires self-compassion. We have to be our own best friend, be our own coach, be our own admirer. Because what we're doing here often happens in privacy. We don't have cheerleaders on the side pushing us on every second. We don't have people watching the minutes and following along with those thoughts in our head that are trying to drag us down and drag us back. We're alone. And so we have to be good to ourselves. It requires patience. It requires that mindfulness of being here. Our mind tends to drag out to the future or fall back to the past, but we have to be consistent about bringing it back here. This is what I control, this moment, this second, this very next action. That's within my reach. One thing it doesn't require is courage. It doesn't require courage because it is courage. That very thing of moment to moment to moment, telling yourself and deciding, I'm going to do this now. I'm going to do this now, this moment, this time. Tomorrow will take care of itself. The past has already been taken care of. But here I am alone with myself. And this time I'm going to say, not this time. This time I'm not going to give in. That is courage. And that's something that when I realized that, I said, I want to dedicate my life to this. I want to dedicate my life to not only creating this kind of courage in myself daily, hourly, even every minute,
but recognizing it in other people, looking for it in other people. You know, really trying to put myself in their skin of what brought them to this moment. What, what were all those little things, those little decisions, those little you know, adjustments in mindset that brought them to where they are now. Now, I'm a teacher, so I have people come to me to learn. And I try to look at it through their eyes. Not of, you know, this is where you need, you're only here now, this is where you need to go. Now, that's important too, we all need to grow. But what did it take you, day by day by day by day, to get here, in front of me, willing to put yourself in front of me, the, who's, you know, the, the expert who's going to be teaching you? To have that kind of humility and that courage to say, this is the situation I'm going to put myself in. You know, how many temptations did you have to say no to to get good enough to be where you're at now? You know, how many of those voices in your head did you have to tell to shut up and push to the side and put yourself in this vulnerable situation where you could make mistakes and make a fool of yourself and expose the fact that maybe you lack some competence or whatever. That's the kind of stuff I care about, you know. I think so many people look at, well, what can you do? What can you do now? What are you capable of? What have you achieved so far? And I, I see this as kind of a selfish mindset. You know, when you look at someone and you think, what can you do? What are you competent at? You're looking at basically how they can benefit you. And I want to dedicate my life instead to looking at how I can be benefit others, and one of those things I think is recognizing when people have attained any kind of courage. When people have developed on their own that mindset of not this time. This time I'm not going to cave in. I'm not going to listen to those voices. Uh, I'm not going to get overwhelmed. I'm going to do something different this one time. And then the next time, we'll see. And uh, I hope this isn't too incoherent of a rant. But really what I, what I want to share with all of you is that to have gotten as far as you've gotten in life, no matter where it is, more importantly, where you came from, required those quiet moments of solitude when you were there and you had that opportunity to quit. You had that opportunity to do take the easy way out, do the easy thing. And you decided, no, not this time. Recognize that in yourself, please. Respect yourself for it. Love yourself for it. You know, and let's try to create a world, or at least a community, where we're looking for that in other people. Uh, that's it. I hope you know something in here resonated with someone, and if it did, I'm really glad I made this. Take care. Yeah, I'm plotting for the best, coming straight from the dirt. I'm sprouting up a stem here. I come, your success where you at? I'm